Hey peeps, how are we doing? Oh, here we go. Look at me. I have a new stand, which is fantastic. <laughs> Woo! No hands. Uh, let me know if you're here. Okay, let me get you up on uh, my computer so we can have a little chat, chit chat. Uh, Paul Power Academy. Make sure I'm live. Oh, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Hopefully over the initial shock of yesterday. Um, but yes, yes. Let me know if you're here. Let me know if you're here. We are going to cover uh, Aisha today. Um, if you've now got your extended butterfly and that's what you want to aim for, is that Aisha? It's like, what do you do from now? Okay, what what do we what do we need to cover? What position do you need? Um, is it good enough just to have an extended butterfly? You really kind of need a mastered extended butterfly. Like you can do it really really well. Um, why why am I, why am I not showing live? Am I live? Am I talking to myself? Wouldn't be the first time. Come on, let me see you. There we go. There we are. There we are. Hey, Kathy, how you doing? Uh, awesome. Awesome. Alrighty. So, Aisha. So, I had a question actually about Aisha. Do you need to do chopper before you do Aisha? It's a great question. Um, now, there's going to be people that can do an Aisha before they can chopper. And that's because they probably kick up to invert. So when we say about chopper or inverting, like being able to like deadlift into it, is to build your strength for that invert. Um, whereas once you're upside down, yes, you can sort of balance into an Aisha uh, because you're working different muscles. So yes, it is possible. Do I advise it? No. Um, I recommend that you you build your strength up so that if you can if you can dead mount or, or lift into an, an Aisha, sorry, not an Aisha, into an invert, um, and you have that strength and control, then you're more likely to be able to get out nice and safely from your Aisha as well. So definitely work up in a progressional order you don't want to just do a massive swing and kick to get upside down and then try and balance and what i see a lot of guys is a lot of people twisting their arms uh to go into a twisty grip which is the most strangest thing right because i know i've been on this ramp before but um we learn like most of like inverts and most of you guys will know like your invert training will be like from basic grip. So when you do your butterfly, you don't really change your grips. But for some reason, the minute like Aisha is taught, everybody changes into twisty grip. <laughs> Why? Your body is so used to a basic grip. It knows what it's doing. It knows how to engage, hopefully. And then you do all the other grips. You've got your elbow grip, you've got your cup grip before you even think about twisting the arm. I mean, it's not the most like, easiest position to get into but the others are does that make sense so these are all gonna help build your strength up anyway um so what are we doing so if i show you what an aisha is let me know if anyone else is here uh i would love to know if anyone else is here <laughs> so we're gonna i'm gonna show you what it looks like i'm just gonna show you i'm gonna show you so you've got some idea what you talk, what i'm talking about if you're not sure maybe if you're new you're a beginner and you're like no idea all right so Okay, so that, my loves, is an Aisha. That's with a true grip Aisha. And like I said, you can do lots of different grips. You can do an elbow grip, you can do a cup grip, and then lastly is a, a twisty. Um, like I said before, I don't know if you, oh, if you did listen to this before, is but I use twisty for transitional moves. That's what you should use twisty for, is if you need to transition to another move, or if you've come from a move that lands already in your twisty. But to change your grip just to get into that position, not advisable when you're, when you're learning um, it as a new trick. So you've got your extended butterfly. How are we going to work towards getting to that Aisha stage? Now, for most people, when they've worked on their extended butterfly, they are quite, you know, you are away from the pole. You've just got that heel on. So for me personally, I think it's too far away from the pole. So I do a move called flower. So flower is like a bent, basically like an inverted uh, fireman. Uh, and that's what you're aiming for is you're getting your knees out so you're going to go into your invert almost well you go into like a caterpillar and then you bring your knees out so I'm going to show you that as well okay so once you've done and you're happy with your extended butterfly give this move a go so we're going to push up to caterpillar and then from here so push 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 pull down at the top 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my knees and slide my feet down. So like I'm pulling, like pushing with the shin, pulling with the calf, and knees are down. Okay, so my butt is back. I'm not allowing the pole to be up close to my hips. I am pushing back. My knees are behind the pole. Does this make sense? So, so we're getting that inverted five in position. And the reason why we want the inverted five in position is if you think about it in an upright position, this is what we're doing upside down. Okay, or you'll have this hand like this. So when you're in that position, you're pushing your butt back. And what we're aiming to do is that when we straighten out the legs, you have your calves either side of the pole, and that's for a good distance to aim for to start with. And then you can lean further away, away from the pole once you've built your confidence up, but you definitely don't want your hips on the pole, okay? Another common mistake I see, and it's usually for people that just haven't built their strength up yet, um, and they're, tr they're literally trying to wing them themselves into an Aisha. So they end up doing something like this. So I get here and they're like, oh, I'm here. This is not an Aisha, guys, okay? <laughs> Quite hard to hold. Um, you might be able to balance, you may be able to balance your arm on your, uh, sorry, your, yeah, your leg on your arm, you might be sideways. We need to make sure we've mastered that push up into your caterpillar. And of course, make sure that you have got your extended butterfly because that'll help build your confidence with your butt away. Um, and obviously that's gonna increase the confidence about taking both legs off eventually. So the first, yes, yeah, so once you're doing the extended butterfly, definitely think about, well, I recommend doing a flower. There's a couple of ways you can like work towards Aisha. You can go from flower, and then I go into a tuck. That's how I teach it in Master the Chopper, uh, Master Chopper, Master Aisha, is going from a tuck, from your um, flower, and then seeing if you can take your legs off one at a time into a tuck position, okay? Um, but you can also do extended butterfly, like bringing your leg back onto um, inverted D, and then taking the one leg off. So let's go through both, okay? I'm just, <laughs> just giving you everything, everything I've got. So um, we're gonna go from that flower into a tuck. So for the, a lot of people, this will be the first time you'll be taking both legs off the pole. So being in a, a close position is gonna help stabilize you. If you just fling your legs off, okay, that's where you feel unsteady and you'll go down to one side. Now, whichever hand is, sorry, whichever hand is lowest, that gap, you've got a gap here, you'll automatically fall out that way always. So you'll always know. So whichever hand is at the top, that same side leg is the one you really want to crunch over, okay? And that will become more apparent when you do it from like your inverted D, your extended butt plant to inverted D. So let's go with flower. Let me see if you've got any questions with this so far. Nobody, nobody's got any questions. Okay, fine. So, flower. Pushing up. Knees are wide, sliding down. Then I'm going to bring one knee in, tuck it to the chest, then I'm going to take the other one off, and I'm squeezing my arm with my legs. Does that make sense? I'm going to put a little bit of grip on. So I'm squeezing that top arm with my knees, just to help me feel a little bit more steady, and then eventually you won't need to do that. So, But to start with, you'll feel a little bit more secure doing that. Does that make sense? When you have got that tuck position, then we can have a look at extending one leg. And like I said, the leg that you want to extend is the one that you're not gonna to want to extend. <laughs> okay, so like I said, you'll always want to fall out to the side. So one side will come off easy, one side will be a lot harder. This is where we have to use all our obliques, okay, to crunch over to that side. So, so from here, tuck, tuck. So my left hand's up, so I'm going to straighten out the left leg. And then I'm going to take that leg off my arm. If I feel good, then I can extend the other leg. But if I don't, you can just stay in this tuck position. Does this make sense? I would always recommend as well, just placing your legs back onto the pole um, and coming down the normal way from your invert rather than coming right down right away because you might land quite heavy. And this is another thing while learning like your um, deadlift choppers, anything like that's going to build your strength for coming down rather than being landing heavy. So can you see how we can go tuck, straighten? So I'm gonna go this side just so you can see that. So I wasn't sure you could see the leg. Um, so the leg, so once I've got my tuck, I'm gonna extend the leg first, 
then I see if I can take it away. I'm not going to focus on the other leg, I'm just focusing to see if I've got the balance to do that. Okay, can you see? Yes, balance. Okay, so flower, my head is in line with the pole, bringing my legs into a tuck position, straighten the top leg, or the whichever hands at the top, same side leg, then extend that leg away from the pole. Get that first, okay? If you feel that you've got that okay, you're going to find it a lot easier. The other, other leg will just straighten. You only need to focus on it, because like I said, your weight's going to want to go that way. So just take it slowly, because like with anything, if you do whack it off quick, it's going to spin you and take you off balance. So that's one way you can do working on Twaisha. Let me see who's got questions here. Um, I've kind of, I'm kind of around the tuck at the moment, or a one legged flower, awesome. It's my pulling arm hand grip that feels like it's going to give. So I don't feel confident leaning away enough to straddle the legs at the moment. Any tips for grip? Welcome. Um, so this is funny actually, because I think it was, was it last week? I was like, oh, right, I'm gonna put Aisha for you guys. And then I couldn't do an Aisha in my true grip, which is hilarious. And I was like, well, I can't teach this, can I? Um, and then I've done a lot of grip strengthening stuff again. Actually, I've done some pole circuits. And my God, the pole circuits are great for grip strength. Um, particularly one of the beginner ones, because <laughs> we do a lot on the pole while pulling down. Um, but making sure that you're not too hot. So do the training at the beginning of your workout, rather than do the do Aisha at the end, because I found when I'm too hot and too slippy, don't matter how many times I wash my hands or grip up, I just don't have that grip strength anymore. Um, so do it at the beginning is what I would recommend. Uh, obviously use some grip, that's what I've just done here, and but also wash your hands regularly. That's And obviously just, just squeezing the pole is going to make a huge difference to grip strength if that is an issue. Sometimes um, it is just a slippy issue and a hot issue uh, that I, I personally find. So doing it at the beginning, you know, if it's not happening that day, put it down for another day, do it at the beginning of that session and it usually always pans out. Um, so yeah, just, I don't know if that makes sense and if that helps. So yeah, put it at the beginning. Um, when you when you straighten out your legs into a tuck, guys, as well, make sure you don't bring your hips in, okay? Because that's got that's a tendency to happen for a lot of people. And then they have this rounded back. So remember, we're trying to keep your back nice and flat. Um, when you bring your hips into the pole, you'll start to round the back, and then you won't have the right technique for doing this move. So make sure your back isn't rounded, which means you need to think about sticking the butt back, okay? But away from the pole. So let's go from... Um, uh, blah, 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 extended butterfly and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that outside leg back so that I'm squeezing my ankles around the pole for my um, inverted D. Once you're in that inverted D, it's a case of taking the leg or the ankle that was on the pole off, okay? So the hooking heel that you had on for your extended butterfly is the first leg to come off. So bringing your back leg on for inverted D is going to help make sure you're nice and aligned, okay? So... My leg back in now we focus a lot on that pushing arm strength but it's just as important to think about pulling the pole down okay this will help line you up as well as you'll feel a little bit wonky if you have a look at like videos or pictures of yourself doing the move and you feel like oh you feel like you're a little bit twisted it's usually because we're actually not pulling down we're sort of hanging from the top arm we've really focused and drilled that bottom arm but we need to think about pulling down that top arm so we can really you know get the back doing some work as well um so think about that okay so especially when you're even in your in, in your extended butterfly it's like okay i'm pushing pushing but am i actually pulling okay pulling back with that top arm or have i got it completely extended out in front of me and i'm basically hanging that will be another grip strength issue or well, not grip strength that'll be a technique issue is that you'll feel like your hands sliding because we're not squeezing, we're not pulling, okay? We're not pulling back. Um, we're just allowing ourselves to hang and that's where our fingers want to come off. Does this make sense? So push, extend, pull, okay? Good alignment. Leg back on. So I'm gonna show you from this way so you can see what I do in my leg. 
when I when you first done this, I remember doing it myself. I was like, oh my god, I cannot take my leg off the pole. Okay, you don't want to just go. Oh, I'm just going to hope for the best and try and take both legs off. If you cannot take that leg that we need to take off initially, that's the bit we need to work on. We're really working on these obliques. Okay, so build the oblique strength off off the pole. Okay, you can do some like ballerinas. I know ballerinas are beginner move, but oh my god, they can work so well for doing this. Get some uh, um, uh, ankle weights a bit more on your wrist to just, uh, you know, make it more challenging. So let's go from that again, this side. So extended, so rather than just allowing this arm to relax, can you see it here? I'm a bit wonky. I'm going to pull. See the difference? Pull back. Bring that back leg on. So I'm squeezing that ankle onto the pole, and then I'm going to see if I can take the other leg off. That's going to be the challenging bit, okay, is taking that other leg off. And like I said, you might be hearing about the, oh, I'm trying to get off, bang, bang. So try and take it off a little bit, and then you feel like, oh my God, I'm going to squeeze, and then I come back into the pole, and you're going to squeeze, and you're going to just rewrite the knee, so you come to the side, crunch, and then you try and extend it out a little bit more. Also, you can take it low, but don't take it too low that you're bringing your hips in. Okay, so the butt is still back, but the ankles are together like this. And then when I take the leg off, whichever side it is, not only am I going out, I'm going slightly down. Okay, because you, most of the time we are going to be at an angle anyway, because you've just done your extenders. So we want to try and get the legs up parallel to the ground. Ideally, you can go lower down to keep the butt back, but we definitely want to drop. So um, what happens is a lot of people say, oh, Every time I work on my issue, I just fall out. It's like my butt's too heavy. And it's generally because their legs are too high. So their legs are up here and their butt's here. So of course their butt's going to drag them down. So when you take that leg off, we're lowering it down. So we're trying to get in line with the butt. Does that make sense? Then you're going to find it easier to be able to hold that balance. I hope this makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, I was hoping that the beginner spinning... Spinny pole combos in your lessons. I've just said, oh, absolutely, 100%. Really good. Yeah, really good for building your hand grip strength up for sure. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody else here? Let me know. Does anybody else want to learn Ayosha today? Uh, let me know if this is helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions. So, like, maybe you've tried it and you're like, I can't get it. Have I answered those questions? Do you have any other questions? I want to know. I want to help you. Um, so, yeah. So those are like the, what I would recommend of how to get into it up the pole, either from flower or like I said, from extended but lower the leg down. So I'm just going to quickly demo that again. Let's go this way. So when you've got an extended leg in, when I bring this leg off, I'm bringing it down. Okay. Make sure you're pulling with that top arm, pushing with the bottom, then extend. Okay. But the legs have to be nice and low. Now I swear to God. It is a lot of oblique strength, okay? You should feel it right down the side, which is why I'm saying build up the oblique strength off the pole. It will make a huge difference for you. I mean, like I said, you can always do um, ballerina crunches, okay? Use some weights, that's absolutely fine too. Use a dumbbell or weight or um, kettlebell or something. Ballerina, uh, some crunches, okay? Oblique crunches are really, really good ones to do as well. Um, okay. I'm here and I'm not sure why I can't get it. I just feel too weak. What conditioning exercise do you recommend? So, Amy, can you do an extended butterfly? It's number one. Um, you just answered it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, yeah, so I would like, uh, can you do an extended butterfly? Can you do a caterpillar? Uh, can you do a one-handed caterpillar? And I really want you to focus, are you actually pulling the shoulders down when you're doing those moves? Um, obviously, in your one-handed caterpillar, the top arm is going to be off, so that's not essential. But when you're doing extended butterfly, are you actually pulling the shoulder back? Um, because a lot of people find that they're just hanging, and that's why, again, they'll fall to the side. Um, uh, but uh, oblique strength stuff, like ballerinas, like I said, color, um, uh, crunches with uh, some kind of weight, 
um, side planks or T planks, plank dips, okay, anything that's going to target that side is really, really, really awesome work. Um, give myself an exam. Yes, absolutely. Film yourself. That's the most important thing. Um, and any of you guys who are part of UPP, book in for coaching. Let me see. Let me help you. Um, because it's so different for everyone. So some people don't have that good pushing strength. So I'm going to say to you, right, work on these exercises. If it is a case you're not pulling the top arm down, right, let me give you these exercises. Okay, you don't have enough flick strength. Let me give you these exercises. So it really depends on what you specifically need, guys. So if you are part of UPP, that's what it's all about. That's why, why I want to help you. Book in for your coaching so I can help you specifically, okay? Um, but yeah, that is that is it really on uh, Aisha. And like I said, there's a lot that you can do as well. My other favorite one is uh, one-handed uh, plank to downward dogs. They are really good um, for building that pushing strength that you need and trying not to twist your body out. So what I mean by that, let me just tilt you down a little bit. So... Um, you're going to be in a plank position, and then from here, keep the core nice and tight. Take one hand behind your back. Try and avoid this, because this will naturally be what happens. We want to try and keep the um, chest facing down, as if you had both hands down. But then we're going to go push up, booty up towards the ceiling, with that one hand behind your back. Coming back to your plank, fully into your plank. Pushing up again, okay? And then obviously you can do that, you know, for, you know five, six times. Swap. And repeat the other side. And again, you can build up your reps with that, okay? You might be able to build up to 10, whatever you feel like you want to uh, challenge yourself with. Um, yes, cool. All right, my lovelies. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. Let me know if you do have any questions and if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. I want to know what you, want to, what you think. Um, yeah, okay. Let me know how it goes. I would love to see some videos. You can always put, uh, hopefully you can post videos in the comments. I'm not quite sure you can, but it'd be great to see. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? If you want to build your strength up, okay, for any of these particular moves as well, UPP is obviously going to, I'm going to promote you on that one because it's got everything that you need and plus coaching. If not, and you want to join the Mission 500, you've got all the pole circuits I was just telling you about. Actually, that move I've just shown you is in pole circuits. We do a lot in pole circuits. We do a lot with grip strength as well. Um, so yeah, you know, if we, if we can help you, we will. And uh, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Just reach out. You can always Facebook us or you can email us. And I will see you tomorrow. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you later.